Hey all of you out there in Eorzea, welcome to She Heals High Tanky, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast today Frankly. is Friday, April 9th, and this is episode 252 of The Shit Podcast. I'm your host, Vegan Pete, and always by my side, the wonderful, the lovely, the freshly haircutted. Hey guys, Avi Ale here. How you doing? That's a way to describe people. Freshly haircutted. I, it it kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, I can, I can see again. It's amazing. Thank you for being here. As always, you, you can see now. You got your bangs trimmed up. Yep. Like a sheepdog. Not anymore. Now you can see. Clearly now. It's a wonderful day in the shit neighborhood. And in case anyone is wondering... And I feel like I have to say this occasionally because not everyone catches on. It's called the Shit Podcast because the acronym for She Heals I Tank is shit. Because I know sometimes uh, Avi will describe us as the Shit Podcast because you know. And some people just stare at her like, no, I don't know. Gotta say the name. She Heals I Tank acronym shit. I like to just assume people know. And then when they don't, I think it's funny because it makes me look like I an idiot. And then it makes them feel like an idiot, and it's just like shared idiocy, we and I'm like so down with it. All feeling like idiots. Yeah, we're all, we're all together in this. <laughs> we actually have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we've had a trailer. We've had a live letter. We've actually had news. We have preliminary patch notes to what? go over. This is mad. It's like we actually have a podcast to like talk about and not try to like make stuff up. It's what we want, like every week, right? Um, if you would like to talk about any of those things, don't forget you can call into the show via Discord. You just hop into the On Deck channel and we'll see what you have to say. If you want to talk about patch 5.5, what are you excited about? What did you like about the trailer? Maybe what did you not like? What were you missing? What were you wanting? Let us know. And as always, it's the first episode of the month. So we open up the community roundup to you. If you have anything you want to plug, any friends' projects you want to plug, plug something you got going on, we want to hear all about it. And since it's the first of the month, we also like the shit shank out. Thank out. Thank what? all the folks. Shit shank thank? Shit, shank. Shank all the folks out there. Should shank thank. Um, thank all of you that help us keep the lights on over here. Our subs. We got first time subs from Canadian Mountain Man and Ian Zhang503. Two months for JWAG 12787, Doctor of Deliciousness, Bane 75, and Tibian Salts. Three months for B Hempster. Four months for Moojack and Cyrax the Red. Five months for Fuji Fudo. Six months for Philibert Lilibert and Maximilian's FFXIV. Nine months for Zalbag 8. Ten months for Spookatron, LaRosia, and Phoenix 0220. And coming in at one year. We got Woo. four people this time. Exterminate, Esperidolon, Bat Kid 01, and Nomad NP. Thank you, guys. At 14 months, we got Unlucky Assassin and Adeline. 15 months, Awesome Austin. 17 months, Agitated Salamander and Disco Cub. 19 months, Your Ursa Laser and Mieko FF14. 20 months, one of Avi's favorites names, Raw Chicken Baguette. And Sweecy 50 holding down that tier 3 sub. 21 months, we got King of Nokos. 28 months, Broly489. 29 from Shinter. 35 from KK McLeod, 39 from Arori and Aja, 30, 43 months from Sorceress, 180, and continuously at the top of the list, we got the real hot chili pepper at 44 months. Sorceress, 180 is right on his tail, though. Yeah, like, he can't quit. No. Can't take a month can't, off. Can't forget a month, or you're like, whoop. And get relocated like FFXIV housing. Is that what it is? No, reclamated, reclaimed? I don't know. <laughs> Reclamation. Starts with an R. Yeah. Uh, thank you all so much. You guys really are the reason we keep doing this show. We love you so much. Thanks for all the support. And now, let's get to everyone's favorite segment. Community Roundup, partner. No? You got to put a little more effort onto that one. I thought that was effort on my part. That was so basey. <laughs> I'm not basey. <laughs> All about that base. <laughs> I can't do it without the setup now. <laughs> Green like, leaf minute. Green leaf minute, partner. <laughs> uh, and this week, 
uh, it was a question that was asked during one of my streams this week. It was asked, if I've completed all the story, if I make an alt, do I have to do it all again or can I skip it? Oh, you know, you do it again. Yep. Unfortunately, mwah, you got to do mwah. it all over again if you don't want to spend any money. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to spend some money, you can buy yourself a story skip. And then you would just do leveling if you like doing but, that. But or then you can like buy a level skip as well. The story skip only skips the story. Like you still have to redo any quests you've already done before. So like any story related to like job quests or anything like that. Like it's just MSQ quit skip. So yes, like, that is true. You don't just like start it. But I mean, I get most games are like that. But as far as I know. Yeah, I, I think it would be a little bit too much of an advantage if they let people do that. Because believe you me, when I was in my prime playing this for a ungodly amount of hours a week, uh, I definitely would have had an alt. I would have had many alts for crafting just to make so much gil. Oh, that yeah, I get that. It, just because the inventory would be wonderful for, for something like that. Yeah. Um, also, like I like the idea of leveling another character and then like trying to go through it all again. I'm just not... I'm not I've that tried person. multiple times. Yep. I haven't got past 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's a lot. That 2.1 to 2.5 is just like so it drags on so long. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah. Uh unfortunately, you can't just skip it if just because you've uh gotten to all the current content, um you got to do it all again. But you do find you do find out new stuff as you're playing through again. It's you find out things you forgot or things you missed. So it's yeah, like, like rewatching a movie or a show, or rereading re a book. You get to be mad at Alphano all over again. I mean, but at least you get shoved, so things even out. Yeah. Now we have Bobby's favorite segment. It's the t -t 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 tweet of the week. It is the tweet of the week, and this one comes from our friend Chili, <laughs> who said, "LOL, LOL." I was just streaming with Paul Metal, and we were in Bozja only for me to randomly shout, quote, Oh, the clit has spawned. <laughs> Thanks to She Heals I Tank, Castrum is always the clit in my head. That's amazing. I, I, uh, I actually wish I had talked to Chili about this. I want to know, like, if Shout responded. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, man, the chat after that would have been pretty funny. That's amazing. I'm glad I'm making that sort of impact on the world. I appreciate that. That was pretty good. Now it's time for news and notes from around the realm. Avi, we got a seasonal event coming up. Which one is it? So the day after Fat Pat Fat, uh, neither We're of us all can talk. flubbing them tonight. The day after Patch 5.5 is live, we'll be getting the next seasonal event, which is brrr, the Hatching Tide. It's going to start. <laughs> I hate all of your sound effects except for Margo. Um, it will start on Wednesday, April 14th at 1 a.m. Pacific Data Time and last until Wednesday, April 28th at 7.59 a.m. Pacific. So if you have two, you have two weeks to get it done like most seasonal events and you are going to want it to do this if you've ever felt like dressing up like a giant chicken before. Accurate. Um, that is what this one of the main rewards is, a giant chicken suit with a giant chicken head so you can adorn your giant self with a giant chicken suit. Or your tiny Lala self. With a giant chicken suit. Still a giant chicken suit. Uh, so. I actually really like the chicken suit. I, I know you do. I almost said chicken soup. I, I don't like any of the giant suits for me personally. Like they're funny on other people, I guess. I appreciate them on other people, but I... I will earn this item and never, ever, ever pull it out of the wardrobe. Ever. Ever. Uh, you also are going to get a couple of housing items, uh, which are the Hatching Tide Confections and an Arkan Egg Pouch, both which are tabletop items. I think it's kind of funny because I did notice that the Arkan Egg Pouch is a belt that you can leave on a table. And like yeah. Final Fantasy is all about belts like in like just the historic costumes that we've seen throughout all the games. But like you can't actually see belts in this game. So I thought it was kind of funny that you could take off a belt, which is going to be taken away from our gear slots, but it's there as a tabletop item. Maybe that's what they're going to do with all of them. As when they take away the <laughs> slot, they're going to let us throw them on tables. All the belts can go on tabletops. That, so, this is my belt table. So I kind of... So, Sorry, you guys know I've been playing a lot of Valheim. 
What I ended up doing on our server was I built a bonfire and then every trophy that you get, I said, okay, guys, when you have extra trophies, just throw them at the bonfire. There's nowhere to put that shit. You think we should do that with belts? Yeah. I want to just throw them all at the bonfire. They don't actually burn. They just sit there. And anyone who unintentionally runs by will pick up a bunch of belts. I like it. Um, so yeah, you're going to head on over to Gilialipo at the amphitheater in Old Gridania to pick up the quest foul demands in order to start this event and the only requirement is that you are level 15 get it foul demands f-o-w-l i don't get it explain it to me pete i i don't get it i was hoping you'd explain it to me really yep what is what is f-o-w-l spell foul what does that mean like the ball is foul no that's, out of bounds. that's a that's f-o-u-l uh, I guess it means chicken. I don't know. It's a bird. Uh, there was a blog post from the community team member Zexos this week, and they de detailed some quality of life changes that will be coming with patch 5.5. This is right up your alley. Triple try at Avi. Excited? Uh, starting in patch 5.5, you're now going to be able to use one five-star card, two four-star cards in your deck at once. I still, like... What does that mean to you, Avi? Nothing. I still just remember when, like, Triple Triad first came out and I would get these amazing cards and I, you would just watch me sell them at <laughs> the Golden Saucer. Be like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's, like, the third one of those I've sold. <laughs> Do you have one in your deck? Nope. Don't care. No. Yeah, I didn't care because I had them all. No, no, but it was it when it was new. It was it before would, you would have them, like the rare drops. It would annoy the shit out of me that you wouldn't at least pop one of them just to have. Don't care. I would rather have the MGP. Chili's like, oh, there's a reward for getting all the cards. What is it, a title? Don't care. Probably. Don't need a title. Uh, I'll never look at it. But for those of you that don't know, the annoying thing about uh, Triple Triad was you could have one good card. And by good card, I mean either a five star or a four star. So we're going from being able to have one of those to be able to have one five star and two four, four star ones. So that's a big deal for those of us that actually enjoy Triple Triad because you'd get all these amazing cards and you wouldn't be able to use them. You'd have your best one and then four shitty ones. Yep. <laughs> and it was kind of ridiculous. Well, they weren't shitty. They'd be like mediocre. I mean, they were three star ones. So they're shitty. I didn't realize that. Like, that is kind of weird that you could have like either a four or a five and then the rest were three or below like it should at least be like one four one five but, yeah yeah but now we get two fours they're making up for their mistakes two fours or one five yeah that's two fours and one five and one oh that's crazy it's gonna be so much are there did you ever beat that one npc who you couldn't beat for? yeah oh so now it doesn't matter you did it the old school way it's not that i couldn't beat them it's that i beat them five thousand times and they didn't drop the card i wanted oh i see um the acquisition acquisition rates of cards will be adjusted didn't say if they're getting easier or harder i would imagine they're making them easier yeah i don't think there's uh like too many people playing triple triad that they need to make it more difficult to get the cards i don't think that's their issue right now and a reward will be added for obtaining all triple triad cards but that won't happen until patch 5.55 because who knows maybe there's some new cards coming in patch 5.55 need to collect those too Gotta catch them all. Gotta sell them to the MGP vendor. That's right. Uh, also in this quality of life post was an achievements change. They are putting Jonathus in Gridania out of a job. I mean, you, like he, he kind of really didn't have... Like he was like the guy who got paid really well for doing nothing. Uh, we don't know what he was getting paid. To me, I thought it was more like a Walmart greeter. I, just there. Like, I mean, he was the only one in, in all of Eorzea who did that job. So I felt like he got paid pretty well because he was the only one who did it. So it was like a very specialty kind of thing. I don't think they've talked about pay at all. It's kind of like the Avengers. How do they get paid? Mm. Why can't Falcon get a loan? <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, in patch 5.5, any reward that you would get for an achievement can be claimed from the achievements menu now. Oh, they like just d d erased him. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, I do believe we still need to go to him for veteran rewards mm. if uh, the translation was right on Twitch chat. Um, but this is really nice. Half the time I would get a reward and then forget to go to Jonathus to claim it. 
So uh, now you can just open up your achievements, see what you just did, see if there was a reward for it. And if there was a reward, you can just claim it through that menu. I mean, that is a lot easier, they, but there's not a lot that you really get for those achievements. So it's like... There's some cool stuff from it, though. I think it they don't add a lot of stuff to no, that. No, like so I have so old. many of those achievement points, like, and I've gotten everything on it. So it's that's what I mean. Uh, I'm not talking about the points and then you like, oh. buy stuff with the points. I mean, like you'll get like your... Oh, the things for completing like the... Like the, the, the tank mounts. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool that you don't have to... Because that always did kind of suck for people who didn't realize they had to go see him um because it's kind of not very intuitive so you would have like potential rewards sitting there that you didn't know were sitting there so that i think that's a good move yeah it's really nice uh but and they for, didn't kill him because he'll still be there he'll you know. still be there you got to go to him for your vet rewards he's old they're old it's all old which they don't really seem to add anything to that system anymore no, no it's, it's no longer a thing but for my fishing buddies out there... That's not me either. It's now going to be easier to release the fish you don't want. Cool. Um, was it hard before? It was a little bit annoying. You'd have to, like, catch a fish and then, like, hit release. Uh, and then it would release it and any other subsequent ones that you bought. But you'd have to do that for every fish that you caught and you didn't want. Uh, so now there's just going to be a menu you can bring up and you select all the fish you don't want. So like you just won't catch the fish you don't want. Well, you catch it, but you release it. So it won't, go, in, it won't go into your inventory. Uh, oh, this is like an inventory management kind of thing. That's why it's good because then you had to, to empty your inventory. Because I was thinking like in my mind, like, dude, if you're like real life fishing, you had to fucking, you caught a fish, fish you didn't want. You had to like pull it up and you had to like get the hook out of its mouth and yeah. try not to hurt it. And don't, and don't throw it back in the lake like it's a softball like my mother did. Like we're like, throw it back. And she chucks it over her shoulder. Don't do that. That, that hurts the fish. Uh, uh, Phoenix, yeah. they did not specifically <laughs> mention ocean fishing, but I would believe it would work for that it's, as well. Yeah, it seems like something that's going to be like a catch-all for all, like for fishing. It it seems mostly like an inventory management sort of situation than anything else. Yeah, how shitty you, is it going to be though if you forget to click the fish you want and then you sit there fishing for an hour and a half and you had the no, fish you wanted so set to release? Oh yeah, I'd that say, was you're uh, selecting the fish you don't want. Yeah, so, yeah. If you accidentally click the one you were going for, yeah, that would uh, suck. But it, you'd probably hopefully notice the first time it like immediately released it. Yeah, but because man. I believe it does say like you released the. But like, what do you, what can do you, call you imagine them? if it was like a fish that you had to sit there for like a really long time and you finally catch it and then it releases it? You're like, what? You're like, oh my god, my chub got away. <laughs> There's always chub. Uh yeah. So you're still taking the time to reel it in, unhook, and release, but you just. At the beginning, you Less can buttons. just do it so you can get them all out of the way at once instead of having to click release on each fish as you catch it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, they've also done a little bit of an update on the emote list. Any new ones you've gotten will have the little green dot by them now, like the new mounts and minions. That's cool because it was some. There were sometimes where you're like, "Where is the stupid?" Yeah, thing? it's just a long list just, now. The game's been out for you know a minute. And there will also now be a search bar so you can search for the emote. Like if you've looked through it three times and you can't, still can't find the yeah. one you were looking for, you're like, ah, just give me wave. Oh, good. Uh, and you can look for it that way. That was all from the the post. But I also from picked up the post. I also picked up some random quality of life changes from the preliminary uh, patch notes. Uh, so here's some new indicators for bonuses while ocean fishing will be added. Uh, so I believe they've added dolphins and seagulls to the game. Chili said these were leaked. For ocean, these were leaked? Oh, no, the, oh. the emotes were leaked. Oh, Chili says, oh, yeah, there will be eat pizza, pantomime, flower shower, and shush emotes. Apparently, those were originally leaked in this post of Quality of Life, and then they had to. Oh, they go leaked back them themselves. Fix it. That's yeah. actually funny. Pizza to me does not make sense. I did not picture pizza in Eorzea, like at all. I'd have to go back and see if it's even a recipe. I don't remember. I yeah, I don't know. That that's the only one that seems kind of weird to me. But the rest, flower showers, seems like one that we kind. Of, they'll probably just use like the. Where they're throwing the coins, but instead of it being uh, yeah. coins, it's going to be flower petals. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Easy one to do. But yeah, there's dolphins added, and I think that... I forget exactly what they do. I didn't write it down. One of them, like, decreases the GPU use, and I think seagulls 
uh, increase your HQ chance of catching stuff. So they've added uh, some interesting stuff to ocean fishing with that. Uh, hot bar slots can now be saved when editing an active set of blue mage actions. Good quality of life adjustment for them. Uh, arrows showing which direction the target is facing will be added to all target range. <laughs> Just makes me think. So in our raid, we're on we're on E11 because we're slow and our group is cursed. Uh, you really have to pay attention to which way Thancred is facing and the front of the little target circle has a little nub or as we like to call it a nip. Uh, so this just said to me that every, every target's going to have a nip in the front now in my head. I'm sorry. Cause our, our group is just ridiculous. So that's, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, so not away. only will it have that nipple as you're talking about, yeah, we're going to get a nip in the front, but on the sides, you know how it's kind of like two rings that mm -hmm. make up that thing Yeah. in between the two rings are going to be arrows like on each side of it, showing the direction it's facing as well. Oh, so it's going to be even busier. Uh, it's pretty light. Like, I didn't even see them at first when I was looking okay. at the picture. But it's kind of nice, though, if you're standing behind it and you can't, can't see tell. that nipple. Yeah. <laughs> even though you should kind of... No, just, it's the nip. It's you, not the nipple. It's just a just nip. You should just be like, well, if I can't see the nipple, the nipple's over there. It's just a nip. Stop calling it a nipple. It's a nip. Ah, the nipple. It's a nip. I don't like I don't like you calling it the nipple. But it was because we were having issues with the mechanics. And if you play a ranged class, you never actually... You, you may not have ever had to really pay attention to the ring on the boss. And E11 is one of the few fights where the boss constantly turns. So you it's not like regularly facing north, just like a lot of the bosses do. So we had to actually learn how to pay attention to what direction the boss is facing. And them inputting something like this to me, says that they're planning on doing more content that has that kind of mechanic to it because they want to make it easier for everyone in the party to now be able to tell which way the boss is facing. And the little nip or the nub on the front became a joke because half the group couldn't tell which way the boss was facing until we pointed that out because we all play ranged. And so poor Chili was just like squinting, trying to he look at not that, get it. trying to look at Thancred's chest, <laughs> trying to follow those nipples. <laughs> <was trying> to... <laughs> and then there was the... Oh, <laughs> you met the marker on the ground. And so, yeah, the, the little circle, you just got to look at it. Now I, I apologize to everyone who sees that and will forever see a nip. That's, that's what we, that's how we got it to stick in our mind. And I'm really excited about this note. Uh, and I think a lot of people are because Esper even put it in uh, our Discord chat earlier. Parties that meet the minimum size requirement for duty roulette leveling can now be matched to duties based on the level of the party members thank god the duty chosen will be within eight levels of the lowest thank level party member god i was so sick of being like level 68 and and like the, i'm the lowest level in the group and we get freaking sestasha yep that was so infuriating we have a full group and we get a freaking level <laughs> So, for example, That's good. That's uh, a, good. a party whose members are level 70, 72, 75, and 79, a duty ranging from level 63 to 70 will be chosen. That is like, that's one of those quality of life changes that you feel like is so intuitive it should have already been happening. So, like, you won't really notice it, but you appreciate it. So, they might not be that confident in it because it's not selected by default. You do have to go into your duty finder settings and select this option. Greenleaf Minute, as soon <laughs> as we figure out how to do that, we are going to tell you how to do that because, fuck, turn that on. Because no one wants to be doing Sestasha at level 68. Like, nope, not even a little bit. Shoot, I don't want to do Sestasha at level 25. I <laughs> am done with that dungeon. Yeah. If I could set it to get Ifrida every time, I would do that. <laughs> Just so I can be done with it. Give me that bonus for two minutes of work. Oh, oh! someone in chat loves Sestasha. That's why you just make an alt. Make another alt. Make another alt. It won't take you long to get to Sestasha every time. Or you just don't select this option. Right. Or you just queue for Sestasha. I just, it makes me upset because you have like no AoE abilities. Everybody like in, in, scholar i think is like can't even really heal at that level they have like like a one heal ability or it's like ridiculous and so then the pulling of it is just 
messy and then none of the dps for the entire fight the the dungeon doesn't matter so you have to do really small pulls that you don't get any reasonable like experience points from all you want to do is get through it but you can't go quickly it's just that annoying like i mix. feel like i get through sastasha really quickly oh unless you get like brand new tank and brand new healer and then you're like i'm being nice and kind to you guys but internally i'm cursing out the world one of my favorite things getting Sestasha is if I get the message that someone is new to it uh, and I'm a tank and I'll do a full clear of it just so they get the mapping achievement. Mm. But when there's someone like really salty about doing a full clear. <laughs> I never I verbalize it. I never verbalize it. I'm always like, unless I'm like in audio with you guys, I'm just going to be like, oh, Sestasha. But other than that, you will never know. I'll be supportive in chat. I'll make sure that. No, like, but you know how Sestasha has those other rooms that you don't have to go to? Yeah, there's one. Uh, there's like, there's a few. Oh, no, there's a, right. That whole other like bar in the other area yeah. where they've got like the. the I'm like, I'll dips. do a full clear just so they get the mapping achievement. Uh, but That's I can cool. I can tell like the other ones are like running away. Yeah. I'm like, you fuckers. I also feel bad for this dungeon because like if you've got a really well geared DPS and the tank is brand new, that tank, it's so hard for them to hold hate. Like I feel like and then I feel bad for the healer because I'm trying to not steal all the hate, but like two hits and I'm ripping it off the tank and like, oh, it's just a hot mess. Uh, Esper saying, I still suggest scaling the XP mobs drop. Uh, you would enjoy it more. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, Canadian Mountain Man's tying on to that. Why not just scale the XP to your level regardless of the dungeon and it would be fine? Well, the big bonus at the end is scaled to your level, but not the mob not XP. Not the mobs. If they scaled the mob XP, then it would be... F I don't know. Maybe this was less work than doing that. I feel like you already get a big bonus just from doing leveling roulette. Yeah. If you got like your appropriate level mob xp that's that's a lot of xp the other thing that i don't like about getting a dungeon that low is if i'm leveling a job i'm trying to learn how to use my abilities and then every time i like queue for leveling i get a dungeon that's such a low level i can't yeah. use any of my abilities and so by the time i finally max level sometimes you don't feel like now you're like oh now i get to learn how to play this job because by leveling it I love played dungeons one through 30 a bazillion times and didn't actually get to learn how to play this job. I think that's a really excellent point actually that I hadn't <laughs> thought about. Yeah. Like, cause that was, it was really frustrating for me when I was like, uh, I think the job I was leveling last time was Bard. And I'm like, man, I don't remember how to play Bard. And I was like, Oh, I got a new ability. Cool. Oh, that entire set of roulettes I just did. I didn't get a single dungeon where I could even use no. it. Great. That's a really good point. So. Uh, Cyrex. Tagging on Sestasha, if you don't clear the map, you're leaving behind prisoners. But you know what? They're still going to be there the next time <laughs> you go in. So are you really leaving them behind? <laughs> Sorry, it was bad. Oh. All right. <laughs> Let's try to teach me some lore. Teach me lore so know some shit. What do you got for me tonight, Avi? All right, Pete. I always feel like it like, sounds like, all right, Pete. <laughs> This is, again, I'm done with multiple choice. I want to actually get you some uh, knowledge here. But my entire screen, like, if you get this one wrong, my entire screen is reds. It means you got them all wrong for, like, the past five weeks. So you got to get this right. I went on, like, a trivia show this week, Avi. And I got, count. like, a lot right. So I think you are just giving me too hard of questions. Dude, last week I thought for sure, I thought it was an easy question last week, but even Chad, I didn't know that one. So, you know, I don't know. But yeah, I heard him in the other room. He sounded like he did a really good job, but that doesn't matter here because here we're on teaching P lore and shit gets real. No, I don't know. All right, Pete. <laughs> Which job was formed in the year 1969? Asians. For the retinue of bodyguards, also known as the Sultan Sworn. Which like FFXIV job? was originally known as the Sultan Sworn. Well, they were a retinue of bodyguards formed in 1969. I don't know or, what not that, 1969, in 969. <laughs> I, was like, 1969. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. is she asking me like about a, like a Final Fantasy story from way back when? Um, what's the R word you're saying? Retinue? A retinue of bodyguards. What's a ret? I don't know that word. Like a, like a troop, like a group. Um, when I hear Sultan Sworn, though, I think, Paladin. Okay. And I've learned to trust my gut, so I'm going Paladin. Good job, Pete. Hell Play yeah. your ding, ding, ding sound. Ah! 
<laughs> that is not the ting 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 sound. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I, I can't control my horny level. Uh, um, I I had a feeling you would get this right because Sultan Sworn and Bodyguard does. You know, it's like obviously it's a job out of Ulda, is what you would think. I think a pops. Um, uh, but. Are, are the paladins out of Ulda or are they um, Limsa? They're Ulda. Okay. So I thought, so like with the Sultana, you think Sultan sworn. So who were her bodyguards? What job that starts in Ulda? Wait, so I thought this was kind of a cool question to not have multiple choice because it was one you could figure out. I got it. So as soon as I heard Sultan sworn, I thought I kind of knew it. So what year was it? 1969. 969. <laughs> you said 1969. Twice. I, did I say it twice? <laughs> Damn it. Well, you can't complain that you don't get any of my questions right anymore because you got one right. Nailed it. Finally. All right. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, if you would, of the last two weeks. We got a new trailer, Avi. Yes. What'd you think of it? It was a new trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're, you're not super hyped for 5.5, to say the least. Yeah. And I'm not... I, I've mentioned this a few times. I'm not a fan of this style of trailer. I don't like the red herrings that they try to do with it. I don't like the dialogue speaking over a part that has nothing to do with the dialogue being spoken. I'm actually a fan of the old style trailers where it was just like, these are the minions you're getting. These are the mounts you're getting. Here's the MSQ section. And we go through some of that. Like... This is like a trailer for an action movie. Pete, we have a lot of content to go through. I don't think we need to complain about the style of trailer oh. again. Are you yada yachting me? I am. Yeah. Heard this. Damn. Come on. All right. Move so on. let's talk about this trailer then. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez. I can't believe the nerve on this bitch. <laughs> a what? Huh? What word did you just say? The mouth on this kid. What? Huh? The Garleans are advancing in a very desert-looking area with the rocks floating in the air. Not sure where that is. A very interesting way to describe that. And we've got Alphano. He's narrating, Our adversaries move against us in unprecedented numbers, compelling us to answer in kind. The outlook, in short, is bleak. Yet our foes are many and we but few. We may still tip the balance in Eorzea's favor. And they got the best part of the trailer out of the way first. We see for Dola, and she does what we've all wanted to do before and shoves Alphano because he's an idiot and needs to shut the fuck up. I actually thought it was really funny. So I watched the trailer, and then Pete goes, did you see for Dola shove Alphano? And I was like, no, I must, I, I don't, it didn't stand out to me. And he, so he made me rewatch it. <laughs> and that's because I was like, Following this, Alphano gets upset and like punches the ground, and that to me was kind of funny. Because punches the ground, he punched a body, and and that w that stuck out to me more than her pushing him. I was like, he's like throwing a fit right now and punching something. It just seemed overly dramatic. And yeah, there's a point when uh, it looks like he's over a body trying to heal it, and uh, he gets mad. He does, does our typical angry fist. Yeah, punches, punches the body. Punches God, the it. body. But yeah, and so. that's when he became a sage. So we, we then get a shot of a giant cruise ship that kind of looks like the whale mount. Um, we uh, weren't quite sure what this was at first. We thought maybe it was the 24-man raid, but apparently it's actually part of the new area of Boja we're getting, and the new zone is called Zadnor. We see a couple of bosses or mobs uh, that we're going to be fighting in this area. And so yeah, it's not like another scorpion thing, and I was like, really? Another one? <laughs> <laughs> Got reskin that bitch. So maybe the cruise ship is like Castrum or Delubrum. Uh, and we do get some scenes with... Yeah, I'm, I'm meaning like maybe that's like the dungeon part of it. Like we're going to have a zone and then somehow that cruise ship is the, is the dungeon part of it. Yeah, I don't really... You know, we'll see. And then we get some scenes with Lion, the Beastmaster from Boja. And they don't give too much away. So. Yeah, and maybe the most interesting part of the trailer is the part with some MSQ in it. We're fighting Lunar Bahamut. But when I say were, I'm not really sure what that is. The whole sequence starts with a shot of Estinian talking to Tiamat. Remind people who Tiamat is. Tiamat's the bound dragon in Az's Law. Because we remember him as, oh, that's the bound dragon from Az's Law. What's his name again? <laughs> and I was trying to like remember why. I think 
I think they always called it a her. Why mm-hmm. why she's bound? Um, Should have looked that up before we did this podcast, Pete. If if you've come here for lore, you've come to the wrong place. <laughs> um, I think it was just like kind of like a repenting type thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think she was just like I, I'm doomed to spend the rest of my life here. Don't don't undo me. But oh yeah, she did. Yeah, she summoned Bahamut, and she's bound because of that. Um, thank you, Chili. Um, the next part of the 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 trailer was actually the bit I kind of enjoyed the most because we see st- we start seeing all these primals. Um, they they have a different like colorization to them yeah, they where they're like kind of like greenish like, tinge, like, like a tint to them. Yeah, and so like that kind of it was kind of fun to like pause it and be like, okay, we got Efreet. That's easy to tell. Wait, is that uh, Nidhog? Wait, is that? And so it was kind of cool. Um, Efreet looks like he's about to like destroy some Fordola. Uh, better not <laughs> been waiting like two and a half years for more Fordola content it's she better not go out and fucking <laughs> ball of fire from Lunar Ifrit <laughs> uh, is Ifrit being controlled by Fan Daniel um, then we get a shot of Urion Jay and Thancred fighting Odin so they're definitely like doing this throwbacks to all these old fights so that was kind of fun to see be like that is so Odin like you know I don't know I enjoyed that bit <coughs> Uh yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Basic and I liked it because it didn't give away too too much. Sorry, Pete. Uh KK's chat, you might want to read that. Just caught my attention. Okay. Um we both agree that this is potentially too much for a dungeon. Definitely too much for a dungeon. Uh it's more likely to be a solo instance with our Scion buddies. Um so then we then see a giant dragon uh fighting that we weren't sure who it was at first we had like this whole is it nidhogg is you know who is this and we realize it's tiamat again showing up who's now freed um and they're fighting another dragon that we couldn't quite recognize but it's not it's not a large epic dragon it's like one of the older big dragons who aren't like impressive (laughs) yeah i I don't know who this dragon was you said it looked familiar i i didn't get it yeah um Da, 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 da. so i lost my place um and so later on they're fighting that that same dragon tiamat is going to be fighting lunar bahamut and there was actually some like pretty epic ability shots between the two of them so that seems like a pretty uh pivotal moment pivotal fight scene because you know you only get those final fantasy like pew, 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 sailor moment you know kind of sailor moon moments when something big is happening it oh. seemed like we saw so many fights during this, though. I don't think they can all be from the dungeon. I think some of this might be from, like, a solo instance so with I don't you think and the I, Scions. We, I, I did read that you said that. I never thought this was a dungeon. Oh. Ever. Like, I, the scene, the primal show up to me is not dungeon material. Oh, well, I know we're heading towards that tower, so I thought... Maybe at least the end boss could be something like that, like Van Daniels bringing down something to fight you at the end. But I don't see Ifrit and Odin, and I mean that would actually be really cool if like the first boss in a dungeon was like Green, like Lunar Ifrit, and then you fight Lunar Odin, and then you fight like that. Actually, be kind of cool, kind of like add that little like fourteen is all about the nostalgia, but this would be like nostalgia within nostalgia because it's like 14 nostalgia and not other final fantasy nostalgia well it is but it's very meta well i like that a lot better than old final fantasy nostalgia because i don't get that but it is still old final fantasy nostalgia but this is just like old it's the game we've been playing and then this one i mean that would actually be very clever on their their part i don't i don't think that's going to happen but i but i feel like that would be really cool it would be a really cool direction um and then pete uh says so then we get a shot of alice and graha with a porksy and they're like there's a whole lot of beast tribe going on we got some vanu vanu we got some noth um and so who knows what they're doing with them i I assume they're just kind of continuing where we left off last time when we helped the The untemper the kobolds yeah 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 uh, we're going to go around untempering other beast tribes. That's very logical, and my brain should have gone there, but I kind of, like, forgot that was really a thing. <laughs> that was actually my favorite part of the last patch, so yeah. I, I remember that one. Um, I like this story. I'm interested to see how it ends up and how they're going to use this. How is it going to really tie into the main story? Uh, are we going to eventually need the help of the beast tribes to... Yes. Conquer whatever big baddie we're yes. going to be I going think, up I think against. That's a, I think them coming in and helping is going to potentially lift their status within the world. 
going to be representative of them saying we're not just beast tribes. We are people. Is that what we're going to need for uh, Alphano's clip of we may still tip the balance in Aorzea's fa- favor? That makes sense. Is that the beast tribes? The beast tribes going to step up. Are they going to be, uh, you call that. it Deus Ex Machina? What? I don't know that, that word. Something Ex Machina. <laughs> Except they set it up, so it's not really that. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm here for that Beast Tribe quest line. Deus Ex Machina. There it is. Deuce Ex. Deuces. Uh, then Deus. we get some more Fordola. She's talking to Estinian. I do like how much Fordola voiceover they gave us because it shows that they didn't just bring Fordola back to just to like be like, hey, look, there she is. She actually like has voice acting. So it means she's actually playing a relevant part she in the story. She looks to be yeah playing a significant part yeah. in this patch. Pete's happy, guys. Oh, uh, it's only been... Ugh, when the fuck was Stormblood? Yep. She's going to die. Like, yeah. She KK, w- you know, you that f- follows the formula. If they kill her, it follows I, mi- the- I might quit. It follows the formula. I might quit. They're going to bring her. They, she, we've got just enough of an emotional attachment to her. She's going to like redeem herself and she's going to die. Prediction. If she fucking dies before Gaius. Gaius is going to die too. But I think he's going to save. We haven't gotten there. But in the diamond weapon, I think the the little oh, raw girl who's like the last one, who's like the little innocent one. And like, oh, no, we're going to save her because she's like the innocent who's going to be saved. But Gaius is going to die in the process. They all need to die. Oh, he thinks Gaius lives for Dola dies. Uh, yes. Uh, Mountain Man, they actually bring characters in that are like subplot characters and then make them more vital and like make you start to care about them to kill them. Oh, man. She's the Abraham. I think she is. Shit. Mm-hmm. All Mother right. dick. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we get the near raid images. Uh, very white colors a little bit of color but it's very you know like stark yeah, it's kind of like creepy super white so like any bits of colors really pop off the screen yeah so we got like this creepy little doll like character yeah that's on a big screen um i think it looks really cool uh i i it like it definitely stands out from the rest of the game it looks like the hacking parts of near automata um if anyone played that game um, anyone it wasn't a popular game or anything we, if any of you guys played that game but i didn't really like get much from this like story-wise i don't think you're meant to i mean i don't think any of this trailer we got much story-wise i think this trailer is to be like look at all the cool stuff you're gonna do that's what the point of this trailer is oh esper says i think fordola will live to be a trust next to the next expansion she gonna be a warrior you um, another tank i'd like that i will never do trusts but um <laughs> will you level it just for for well, I, I take that back i will do a trust oca- occasionally the first time doing a dungeon especially right. if you're not interested in doing it right away uh i'll do a trust first so i can get that like dialogue so you'll cheat the characters. on me with a trust i see how it is dude i will cheat with you or on you <laughs> with fordola Anytime. KK says they uh, may also try to find a way to make memories a trust, which will allow for those who died to be trust members. Um, I think that's a really cool idea. I don't know that that will happen, but it would be really cool to be able to like go back and run dungeons with characters who passed away uh, to like, I don't know, make that. Dibs on Louis (laughs) Swa. But like Horshavon and stuff, like that'd be really cool. And then, but then you'd have to like turn cutscenes back on. But they have to be like dead. Like, I want to see the hole in Horchifon's chest. This is it. You gotta, you'd have to turn it. the cutscenes back on. So, like, you've got them with you again, and then to go through on it, and, like, God, everybody's calling dibs. You guys are ridiculous. All right, Pete, what's, uh, what's the next uh, bit? Next big thing was diamond weapon. We get a decent amount of diamond weapon. We found out during the live letter that a big part of this that was in the trailer is the opening sequence of the fight. Mm. Uh, the youngest of the daughters of Gaia seems to be piloting the diamond weapon. That was her goal at the end of the last story. Like, right. I, I don't think it was like her weapon, but she wanted to be the one to. She wanted to sacrifice herself, uh, and pilot it and save the other brother. Uh, <laughs> I don't know all their names. Guys, no. Guys is orphan kids. Um, the orphan Oroz. Oroz. One thing that I think is noteworthy. Uh, in this, they did two platforms. In the live letter, they only showed off one. 
and I noticed there was a color difference in the platforms. Like one is the color of blue, which are G weapon that that suit that we were in in the previous one. Okay. Uh, I always want to call it the G wagon, but the G warrior, um, G is wagon. blue, and the other one is red. So I I kind of feel like there has to be another Gundam style thing like ours, and I'm curious who's gonna be piloting, piloting it. it. Uh, is it maybe the other sibling? Is it Gaius? Gaius? Yeah, I don't know. It makes sense for it to be Gaius or the other sibling. I actually didn't notice that. I might need to go watch the trailer a third time. Uh, <laughs> but that was a bit I did not see on my second watch through. Um, I think because like simple color changes like that to me is like could potentially be phase changes and stuff. So that's why I didn't notice it so much. But I did notice that the fight itself had like a, um a split in the in the arena where it looked like there was like a platform on one side a platform on another and the boss kind of had like a a moat in the middle Mm -hmm. so you know i don't know yeah i'm kind of excited for the fight just to see how it's going to play out like is it going to be like a gust of wind or is diamond weapon going to throw half the group onto the other platform and it's going to be split yeah um so i'm interested to see how that fight's actually going to play out and then this might be what i'm I'm not going to say excited, but I'm most interested to see how the story is going to play out because I was really liking the story when we got the first part. Yes. And then it's kind of all like gone downhill since then for me. What? Uh, That doesn't happen in this game. Because I was like, I am seeing how they're setting up just like everything working out for everyone. And then I'm like, why does every story in this game have to be like that where everything works out hunky dory, there's never any stakes, and everyone just ends up happy. I I honestly, like when I'm saying I predict Gaius is going to die, I I realize that that's actually, not that I like want Gaius to die, but Gaius to die, I think that would be good storytelling. Yes, and And, that's, that's all I want from this. Right, and so I like, I, I'm predicting that because I, I hope he dies because that's, that's better storytelling than the girl who's in the suit that murders everyone dying because you expect her to die. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I want him to die. I want all the kids to die. And I want the moral to be like what a fucking horror war is. Like, I would be okay with the, the young female Aura living, but I want the crazy doctor to die. And if we could like save those little kids that were like he's trying to fuck up. That would be cool. Yeah, like, let's get rid of Lord Farquaad. That's um, right. <laughs> it's so what he looks like. Oh, it's bad. Don't even remember his name. Don't need to. You, everyone knows who you're talking about. Um, so th- that's actually where, what I'm most interested in. I'm like, are you going to go where I think you're going, or are you going to surprise me and actually have some stakes to this story? We will see. And then we get a shot of Xenos with many a weapon for him to choose from. That is a cool shot. So, like, he's in, I don't know if it was, like, a throne room, but it was kind of, like, an epic interior space. And there's a bunch of swords and other weapon cells, like, all blades, like, stuck in the ground around him. Sort of, like, like they're people around him, essentially. Like, who does he choose from? I feel like the implication here is these are all weapons from people he's vanquished. I like that. I like that. I think that's cool. Otherwise, I don't know. If you just like made these weapons or had a blacksmith make these weapons and you just stuck them into your floor, it's like the most poser thing to do. That would actually be kind of cool if he he saved the weapon from every person he killed, every like decent fight, and the only weapon he didn't have was ours, and that's why that like kind of leads into why that bothers us so much just like lulu in final fantasy 10 she stole the belt of every person she ever had sex with and made it her stop it she murdered them she didn't sleep with them she slept with them no stop going into your little boy fantasies lulu was a badass that's her notch in her belt and she just took the whole fucking belt no she's owning it no baby chili says that uh one of the weapons does look like clouds from final fantasy 7 I did not see that one actually. Third time to watch uh, it. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I would I didn't pause it on that scene. I was just like, oh, a lot of weapons. Uh, I need to pause it and uh, go see what any of the weapons look like. Um, a lot of I I heard a lot of people speculating. I didn't think they'd do it like this, so I I didn't go back and look. Uh, they were speculating that there might be a weapon that he's going to use in six there. Possibly. I mean, there's that room has to 
play some important part in what's going to happen. Either his weapon he finds there or he there's some sort of revelation that happens See, I in don't, that space. I don't trust these trailers at all. No, I know. So I don't think anything important is there. Okay. Like why? Why? Like I think it. Like you said, you thought it was a cool shot. I think that's why well, they did it. It's a cool shot, but also like, why put the dev time into creating a room like that, which is very unique to the game, if there's not a reason for it? That's more of where I'm thinking. I think it's just because it looks cool, and it like my like I said, the implication to me, anyways, was these are the weapons from the people he's vanquished, so he's killed a lot of people. Well, but if we get some cool story behind that, that's relevant. Like I'd like to get some little bit of story behind. I mean, that to me is is interesting as long as it's not just like a throwaway moment. Uh, we might get a little bit of that, but I don't know how much it has to do with where we're going in the future. Oh, it is I, what I'm trying to say. Oh no, I agree. I don't think it has to. I don't know. I guess a relevant moment to me and a relevant, it doesn't have to be progression of the story. It can also be character development. Yeah. I get so, that. so that's, that's where I, it, it, I, I see that as a character development, like pivotal sort of thing. Potentially. Well, I would definitely like some character development with Xenos yes, because uh, I need it. <laughs> can't say I'm the most excited about going into 6.0 with Xenos as the big baddie. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of feel like we got enough of fighting Lunar Bahamut in this trailer that we might take care of Fan Daniel in this patch. God, I hope so. Maybe not 5.5, but 5.55. Um, I'd like to get rid of Fan Daniel before we go into 6.0 because I really don't give a shit about him. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, I really didn't want to go into 6.0 with Xenos. I'd rather have someone completely new. But if I had to pick between going in with one or both of them, I would definitely pick just Xenos. I don't want either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Xenos, maybe if I get some more character development. But for me right now, he's very one-sided. I find him very boring. He, he seems like the same Xenos that we fought first. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that... That's about the main points of the trailer, I think. Um, chat, as always, you're welcome to jump into our Discord if you want to talk about anything, see if we got anything wrong or you want to add something. But we also got a live letter and some preliminary patch notes. So just to reiterate, of course, we're getting the patch Tuesday, April 13th. We've known that for a while. Uh, this is going to be broken into two parts. So part two will be releasing at the end of May. Uh, they did mention that the trailer does have some stuff from 5.5 Part 2, so we won't be getting everything that we saw in that trailer on Tuesday. Right. Tuesday. Um, Don't be greedy. Yeah, so... Even for though the we live all letter, want to be. For the live letter, part of our speculation from last week came true. We got Yoshida on a platform looking at the new diamond weapon. Um, <laughs> but apparently the servers they usually demo this stuff on already have Endwalker stuff on it. Uh, so they couldn't use uh, God mode for Yoshida there. That's funny. Uh, so he never pulled the boss. Uh, the translation al also said that there would have been a spoiler pretty soon after pulling the boss. So mm -hmm. I think it might be like how we get that second platform. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, we did get to see that whole beginning cut scene leading into the fight. Uh, the diamond weapon was flying through the sky with us trailing behind with our G-Warrior Gundam that was kind of retrofitted with more weapons and it had a flat platform on top like a flying aircraft carrier. Uh, we're shooting... So did we just fly over that room that Xenos was in with like magnets yeah, and pick yeah, up all yeah. the weapons? It's called the cloud deck. We were just bow, in the clouds. Bow, 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 bow. I just, I'm just being an Didn't ass. Didn't see that thick boy at all. <laughs> just saying more weapons. Like we just go magnetic, pick them all up. We good. <laughs> We're shooting lots of missiles, but Diamond Weapon is a slippery boy and is able to s avoid all of them. Uh, then we're on top of the carrier, and it's a rectangle shape. Pretty narrow, actually. I predict a lot of backflips off of the edge. Uh, that's all we see during the preview in the live letter. But like I said, during the trailer, during the, uh, the pictures that we have on the 5.5 special site, you can definitely see that the diamond weapon is in between two platforms. One blue, one is blue, one is red. So I'm thinking that someone else shows up to serve as that platform. Someone else is the platform? You know, flies a Gundam suit I know. aircraft I carrier just... thing up there. Um, Who would it be? Gaius, maybe? Another sibling? Whoever they are. Hopefully they die. 
I need some death in this story, baby. Not everything can be hunky dory. Uh, to start the diamond weapon mm. quest line, you'll. Ooh, what if Sid died? No, Sid's my favorite. <laughs> Fuck off, Sid. <laughs> Uh, that, but you know what? I like Sid. K, K, so KK type Sid in chat. And like that actually made me feel something. Like Gaius dying's like, yeah, that makes sense. He should die because, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like, what if it was Sid? I was like, I mean, not oh. going to lie, it could make sense. Sid, Sid has been involved in this storyline the whole time. No, no, I know. But I'm just saying, like, I don't expect it to happen. But if it was Sid and if Sid died, I would be really fucking excited. Like, not excited. Ex sad. Like, I that would mess with me. Uh, and KK saying he's going to be in the next expansion. So, no. Yeah, they're never killing Sid because Sid is in, like, every Final Fantasy. But I had, like, a little twinge moment where you said Sid. And I, would, like, pictured Sid. And I pictured Sid dying. And that, like, the, and then it made me realize, like, that little twinge, that little, like, like emotion sadness is what I want to feel from the, from a game so i don't know anyways yeah i mean i am a fairly big like get misty like i don't do like a full-on sob but i get uh, you're not like emotional i get teary in I, general like, uh, no but i get teary at like shows and movies like only when animals die what are you talking about okay i get misty at a lot of shit uh but this game has never done that to me no well the, I, one I, time this game for me? For me, one time. Oh, for you. Uh, yeah, this game has never done it for me. Uh, so I would like to have some stories that might might get my eyes a little wet. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't understand people that cry over this. Uh, what did I? Where, where, where was I going? <laughs> Not to be a dick or anything. Yeah. You're at the 24 man raid, I think. Uh, oh, uh, but I did want to say to pick up this diamond weapon quest, you'll head on over to the locks and talk to our friend, the resistance officer to pick up the quest duty in the sky with diamonds. Mm -hmm. Um, I like I, the name. I level requirement for this is 495 for normal and 510 for extreme. There is the new 24 man raid, um, which Yoshida went into. And we actually get the name of the raid this time, uh, which they had previously kept secret. It's called the Tower at Parada Paradigm's Breach. It looks incredibly near, which is what we expected. Um, and it does appear that we are in a simulation. That's what it looks to me. I don't know. We're, I don't think we're actually in a simulation, but that's what it kind of looks to me. Like when we do the hacking scenes in near. Uh, it doesn't really show off too much. Um, we do see a pretty unique looking boss. And then they showed off some printouts for the gear after he went in. So maybe that will be the gear that we're going to be getting. Uh, it didn't really match the part that we were shown. So yeah, who knows? to me, I'm like, that gear does not look like it comes from that that raid. Like, no. <laughs> uh, so if you've done all the previous quests for the series and you're going to head over to the dig site chief in Calusia and pick up the quest Kanog alone to start the new quest line. There's also going to be a weekly quest, which is, uh, we believe, going to be doing all three of the near 24-man raids um, in order to get those darn coins. They haven't said what reward we're going to be getting yet, but that's likely what we're going to be like working toward. Uh, the eye level requirement for the new 24-man is 495. They are upping the amount of drops in the previous near raids with this patch, which is very, like, uh expected of of a patch Actually, at this level i don't know if they've done that before um so in the copied factory each party in the alliance is now going to get the 2b glamour both pod minions oh that's new the 9s card and five orchestrian rules okay that's not what i was expecting to read i thought you're just <laughs> going to be able to like roll so that is very very cool that they're going to be making it so the rare minion is now available for everyone because it was so rare like I I don't remember ever seeing it drop. Pete says he saw it drop. I, I've seen once. it drop once, like, and I haven't done this a ton recently. Uh, but like, if it would have dropped like fifty percent of the time, I would have kept on doing it until I got it, just because I wanted it. Yeah, it, it but was if it drops so like rare. one every thirty-five times I've done it, like, I'm not gonna keep on doing it for it. That also makes me wonder if this means they're not going to keep the near raid in the game. No, I don't think it's a time. No, they can't do that. I, I'm just saying. Or maybe they're doing this because uh, we're getting past this content. So, that, so they know that the queue times for it are going to be a lot shorter. And they want to make sure that every person who runs this as they're leveling up gets all of their drops without having to farm it with incredibly long I'm kind of just thinking about it now and thinking about the old ones. 
I don't think there's ever been something like that in the old ones that had no. that low drop rate. No, so I well, think no, no, but this isn't. It's not even just. It's not even just the minion. It's you get the glamour, you get both minions, you get the card and five orchestrian rolls. Uh, but it's like you still have to roll on it. Just that. Oh, e one e of each is gonna each draw. Each party is getting. I it. read this like each person gets all of that. No. Oh, that's why I was like shocked just now. I was like, that's a lot for each person to get. <laughs> Okay, no, that each, makes way more sense. It's going to be each party gets that. The instead opportunity of like, to get uh, that. Okay. Instead of like one, it's, one minion dropping for the alliance. It's it's the way Pete... I, I'll admit, guys, I didn't watch the live letter. It's just... I just don't. Um, It's the way Pete wrote it that like... She hasn't done that since 2.1. Yeah, I just so. don't. That's not my thing. Um, You know I'm here to support my husband. Uh, So, yeah. Cool. Uh, So, yeah, I might actually finally get that minion. <laughs> Uh, the Puppet's Bunker, each party will get the 2B and 2P Automaton Minion, 2P card, and 4 Orchestrian Rules. So they're upgrading it in both of the current ones. Uh, the Save the Queen update, that's the Relic Weapon. New Battlefield, as we mentioned before, is Zadnor. It's on the border with Occupy Dalmasca in the northeast of Bosia. Stands the Sunken Plateau, Zadnor. It is here that the 4th Legion will make its stand, the Battle for Bozja reaching its bloody climax. See, Cyrex, Cyrex thought the same thing I was, and they were getting excited. So it wasn't <laughs> just me who interpreted the way you wrote. Like I was like, oh, that's got crazy. I mean, considering most of that stuff only lets you win it once, yeah. Uh, now it, it's well, a lot. It's going to be a lot it, quicker to like get it. It was like you run it once, and you get all those things. Like That was, yeah. But it's still great. Uh, you will have to have done patch 5.4 MSQ and 5.45 Save the Queen Story to do this new content. This is uh, the final chapter of the Save the Queen Story. Mm. Uh, resistance rank will increase from 15 to 25. Uh, new skirmishes and critical engagements will be added. Elements of progression beyond rank 25 will be implemented. A means to increase amount speed will be added. You can purchase a Bosjan Southern Front riding map from the Resistance Quartermaster at Utya's Aegis. Skirmishes and critical engages, engagements will be adjusted for fewer participants. The availab availability of large-scale assaults, Castrum Lacus Latori, Delubrum, etc. will be adjusted. The chances of being elected for duels will now increase upon non-selection. So if you've ever wanted to do those duels and you just have had really bad luck getting picked, now they're implementing a new thing called notoriety and you will earn notoriety while you participate in the prerequisite critical engagement, but don't get chosen uh, for a that's duel. Cool. So if you're not chosen, you get a higher percentage of being yes. chosen the next time. That's so cool. the more notoriety you get, the better chance you have at being selected for the next that's, duel. That's basically saying the more times you volunteered, the more likely you are to be chosen the yeah. next time. That's cool. So once you do get selected for a duel, you'll lose all your notoriety. Which is fair. Yeah. Uh, if you win a duel, the high morale effect... Uh, is being buffed it will last for 60 minutes now instead of 30 and the amount of metal earned will be doubled so the person who does the duel is your buff different from those who are just like observing it i believe it's for everyone okay so the incre the the buff for everyone who watched or and the person who did it is the same yeah i honestly think the person who won the duel should get like this bat like they should get like that buff for two hours like there should be something they get achievements okay i don't care about achievements like uh, they should get the achievement and a better buff. Um, yeah, I feel so bad. I feel like sucky that I didn't beat the duel for the ones I got selected for. Yeah, you disappointed everyone. Puss. <laughs> uh, Delubrum uh, Regine. Delirium. Delirium. It's not Regine. delirium. I spelled that wrong. It's Delubrum. Are you thinking of beer? Regine. Savage will be adjusted to allow between 24 and 48 participants. Uh, which is kind of nice. It's hard to get 40 people, 48 people to do shit. Uh, final step in the resistance weapon upgrades. Upgrade quests will become available upon unlocking Zadnor during the 5.5 storyline. 5.55. Stats will be just a little bit better than those in the Eden's Promise weapons, savage weapons. Uh, once one has been upgraded, the process for upgrading further weapons will differ. By differ, I assume it's going to be easier. Cool. 
the new Unreal trial is going to be Leviathan. What's your experience with Leviathan, Avi? First time, let's go back to Realm Reborn. Do you remember? Was it tough? Was it easy? I didn't enjoy Leviathan. Again, this was when I was playing Bard as my main character, and I think... I still feel like I'm still not even positive when you're supposed to interact with the thing in the back to make oh, the bubble yeah, appear. Oh, yeah, you never did that. I did that. Yeah, <laughs> and and I I think I need to be, like, playing that fight without you, and then you need to point at my screen and be like, you see this right here? These words at this it's spot on your screen mean that. Basically, when it says the elemental converter is ready. Yeah, but I don't pay attention to those words ever. Like, ever. Um, And so... Like, as a bard, that was something I was supposed to be doing. And and so, like... Yeah, because not... you could just, like, hang out by it. Yeah. And and so, I, I just didn't really enjoy the fight. Um, I don't... I mean, I, I enjoyed Titan. And it, unfortunately, our raid group prioritized raiding over doing the Unreal fight. So, I didn't get to do the Titan one now that it's going to be gone. Leviathan, I have no desire to go in and do, like, at all. Yeah, I remember uh, when Titan was first unveiled as the Unreal uh, Trial. We took one day off of uh, Savage Rating to do that. I was having and, so much fun. And we didn't get very far, to be honest. Nobody else was having fun, uh, but I was having so much fun. I, I think it was just everyone wanted to do new stuff, and yep. this isn't really new. Like No, and I get it. Everybody else wanted to do other stuff, but I was having fun. And all I care about is that I was having fun. <laughs> But that's because you really like Titan. I did. It was, and honestly, it's probably the only Unreal challenge that I wanted to do. Yeah, Shiva ended up being a little. Chili bit... was crying inside. <laughs> I, I gotta say, like the tank busters and Titan are legit. Yeah. And healers, like tanks, have to be on point, and healers have to be on point. You probably like Titan because you're just like, I just need to avoid these fucking pancakes. I'm just DPS. I go jump around, do my thing. I'm gonna. <laughs> break you out of the jail it's so much fun i'm not healing this shit fuck that noise so with unreal titan i would imagine people actually have to pay attention and relearn uh i mean leviathan leviathan uh if they can hit the head or the tail because it reflects damage you know what's so funny is like because you you commented on that people are gonna have to pay attention if they're hitting the hail head or the tail and until I think the like the last time I ran Leviathan, you were like, I was like, which one is it again for melee? Because it's playing a melee, and you're like, it doesn't matter anymore. And I was like, what? <laughs> I've always been here as range, and I was always. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. I don't know. Uh, Chili says they're nerfing Levy Unreal though. That's uh, because participation has declined. So Pete, what were the numbers from Shiva to uh, Titan? You would just uh, share them with uh, me. I heard they went down. I don't think I shared this. I think someone else shared it. But you shared with me. With you. you told me. I didn't tell you. I don't talk to anybody else about so, this game. Someone else shared it with you. It wasn't me. I am 100% positive it was you. <laughs> it's probably Chili and Rachel. No, I was sitting on the couch. You came out and told me when I was on the couch. <laughs> I don't know about that shit. He told me that like you know, I don't participation know from uh, Shiva to Titan dropped by like 60 something percent. You sure that wasn't one of my made up facts? I don't know when you make up facts. <laughs> Um, I, I wouldn't doubt it because Titan was uh, quite a bit harder than Shiva was. Um, but anyways, Leviathan is the Unreal Trial we're getting. I still do want the reward from all the leaves we get from uh, these Unreal Trials. So maybe if we eventually beat uh, <laughs> Savage, I'll go back and do this Unreal Trial. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't expect our static to do it. But um, I might have to join that those party finder groups, try to get it done. That sounds like hell. Uh, <laughs> crafting and gathering. We're going to be getting more challenging expert recipes. Yes. And at first I was excited for this. I'm like, oh, are they actually going to give us like expert recipes that actually we can use for stuff? Hmm. I'm like, the, the restoration of Ishgard is complete, so we're not going to use it for that. Are we actually going to get some shit? But no, there's going to be like new weapons we can get or new tools we can get for crafting and gathering. So we're just going to have to make expert recipes to get those tools for turn-in. Fun. I would guess. Uh, and I stopped doing these because that's all it was. Got it. I'm like, I don't need to make 50 of this and 25 of that. I I don't care. Um, So unless I get really busy over the summer, I don't know if I'm going to do these. 
because whenever the new expansion comes out, I'm going to be able to get new gear anyways for crafting and gathering. Is it worth it for I'm that, not, I'm not gonna need that this small shit. period of time? It, it's and like, it's not even hard to do these expert recipes so far anyways. I was able to macro everything to get to mm. like the minimum part for the third tier. Um, it's just boring to me. I yeah. don't care. It's a time I, I sink. Can't, I can't be bothered. Um maps opened via the gathering log will indicate areas where gathering points appear that's a good i could have put that in quality of life adjustments yeah um that's nice um we mentioned this a listing of fish to be released at fishing holes will be added uh the firmament will periodically hold a sky rise celebration in honor of its restoration what does that mean so celebrations will last for 24 hours and then there will be a two-day break and then they will hold it again for 24 hours. Oh, it's just it's an event that's going to happen every two days. Yeah. Uh, so fates will be held every two hours during the celebration period. So you should get 12 fates to be able to participate in every time they so celebrate. Every 48 hours, we get 24 hours of celebration. Well, 24 hour celebration. And there's two 48, 48 hours, hours in between. In between yeah. And then 24 hours of celebration. Yes. And you get presents for doing them, according to Chili. Um, the new custom delivery client will be Count Charlemand de Durandere. <laughs> uh, you can start this quest line by talking to Francel in the firmament and accepting the quest. You can count on it. Ah, ah, ah. No? Did you not get my joke? Come on. The count. Come on. One. Ah, who? Ah, ah. They showed off some really different looking housing exteriors. <laughs> I wish I would have grabbed a screenshot of this for you, Avi, because I think you actually would have really liked it. Uh, I did see one of the Tudor uh, houses that had a really cool shape, and then it had like the the large stone uh, chimneys and stuff okay, going yeah. up on the outside. So to me, it kind of looked like a uh, weaponsmith or armor smith was, outside. I like that they were playing with the shape of the exterior buildings, considering yes. the fact the exterior doesn't actually affect the interior. This this was so drastically different that yeah. I think it would affect the interior. No, they're they're different. It's it's a completely different zone. The interior of your house Wait. is not actually affected by the exterior. It's a different zone. You go into your house, it's a different zone. It's not affected by the exterior. Really? You did not know that? <laughs> the only thing that happens is it links like the interior wall design that you've associated. That's all you get. Okay, if I get this, because this shit looks like it cuts off a third of that house. It's not going to happen. You're telling me I'm going to be able to have that outside and have as big an inside as I already have? <laughs> yes. My whole thing was like, I will gladly give up part it's of like the inside the, of my you're house. You're not giving up any of your for inside. For a better looking outside. You're not giving up any of your inside. <laughs> it's like me. I'm dead on the inside, but I look amazing on the outside. No, it's like the TARDIS. The TARDIS. That's what it is. Bigger on the inside. <sighs> Oh my gosh. All right. So this isn't as I'm cool so as I thought it was. I'm so glad you're learning coding. Like you're going to just be like brain explode. Um, no, but I thought they were actually making the housing different. No, it was really cool that they're, they're really uh, using different design properties and, and making it so it's not just like a reskin of every existing house. They're actually creating different structures, which is really cool. But it's still the same on the inside. It's still the same on the inside. Oh, I want a different... <laughs> Uh, I know Chili just said, wait till he learns that falling is just a camera trick, right? And like earthquakes are just camera tricks as well. Like I, I, I definitely <laughs> noticed the camera trick in the cloud deck, believe me. Uh, <laughs> those clouds are just like, they're just like a treadmill. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, they showed off some windows that look kind of cool. They're like faux windows and it just looks like you're looking out at the Azim step or so something So we actually like that. get some faux windows that actually have a view instead of just yeah. light. Cool. Uh, new glamours, cute dress. I think you might like Avi. No, you showed it to me. It's it's a very like, ba we get a new baby doll dress, which is cute for people who like baby doll aesthetic. I am. Why would you think I'm to a me, baby doll like, aesthetic? To me, I was like, that kind of reminds me of Greece and she likes Greece. Except it's like, the, it's the people in Greece you don't like. So I obviously, don't like anyone in Greece. So you need to like watch that movie because it's literally like the people, you, you like the greasers. You don't like the other group of people. That's. Yeah. What do the greaser women look like? They're wearing like leather pants and like leather jackets and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Well, I've spandex. never seen it. Um, new areas have been added for subaquatic voyages. 
Wider selection of items obtained from the voyages and maximum submersible rank have been increased from 80 to 90. And furnishings from the Final Fantasy XIV furnishing design contest have been added. And they definitely uh, added, I, I did see the, the interior furnishing items. They're, they're very much like, hey, look, you can make a pub in your house. That's, that's how it felt. I thought they looked cooler. Like, they definitely looked like you could, like, it like you said, make a... It felt very real world. Make a pub. Yeah. It was a very pub. And then they had exterior, um, like, you could make, like, blacksmithing areas outside your house. But you're not actually going to be able to use them to craft. So I thought that, that felt kind of weird to me, just like playing other games. Like you see those stations in other games. You're like, I'm going to blacksmith here. But in 14, it's like, no, you're just going to look like you are. To me, it just looked cooler. So I was all about that. That's all it is. Yeah. Because I think the skins for the houses right now are kind of lame. I mean, they're. I like the the... They've been putting more effort. Like the first one where they really kind of made it quite a bit different was with the um the florist house, the floral. I can't, but the one I have on my personal house, mm -hmm. uh, it definitely has a different vibe. So I'm ex excited to see more of that. Where like, like they oh. actually like extended the the front and made kind of like a patio thing, mm -hmm. so it's not just the same build that you always see. And like that one looks the same, but it has some balloons up top. Right. That's they've just been reskinning. Uh, during the presentation, Yoshida brought out some new mounts. Of course he did. We saw the diamond weapon dragon. We saw a golden scree mount. Which is like also not just a golden scree, but the first scree mount. Is it? I, there's no scree mount. That's freaking awesome. Uh, we also got a golden Namazu mount, which is like the mount you get from completing the Namazu beast tribe that had like six... Namazu carrying you. It was like eight. A lot like of eight. them. He has a lot of them. A lot of little Namazus carrying you. They're going to be all in gold. And I did catch. Oh, there's a scream out from the Beast Tribe. I never did that Beast Tribe, Chili. Thank you. I did catch that Yoshida during the stream did say like status symbol. He said it in English. I was like, oh, he just spoke English and said status symbol. <gasps> I understand those words. Um, And Reddit translators said they are going to cost a gill. And they didn't say how much, just that it won't only be one or two million gil it'll be three so maybe no, they saw my giving away gil video and was like oh shit yeah, we need to do something we need to make gil you're the worth only person who's anymore. ever done that i don't know but also the mech dragon that you get for collecting all of the dragon mounts from the extreme weapon tile trials we got to see um the quest to get this mount after you get all of the dragon mounts is called the dragon maid and can be picked up from the war machina fanatic in the locks and he also had a couple other mounts on his hot bar. I forget what they come from. We didn't see them in the live letter. They kind of look like gazelles to me. I like gazelles. Better than the wimpy dragons we got. Uh, from the prelim patch notes, there are now luxury traders that offer rare and extravagant items. So maybe this is where you're going to buy those expensive mounts. Uh, there is Edeline in Mordana and Tabith in Yulemore that you can go visit to see what they have to offer. I yeah. like that they added them to Mordana and Yulemore instead of just the three main city states because these are like the the like the hubs. Yeah, well, no, they're they're not just like the main three hubs. These are the hubs where like you've leveled up. Yeah, you know, you can get the extravagant items. I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, the patch notes for uh five point five have where to get the gazelle and stuff. I just didn't care enough to look it up. Mm. Uh, Explorer mode, Avi. New duties will be added. Uh, level 70 dungeons. Level sync and item level sync can be disabled. Instruments can now be used in Explorer mode. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Fan Fest is going to be happening on May 15th and 16th, which y'all probably have to miss. Yeah, I'm going to because I'll be um, vaccinated by then. Decided to get married. Pick the only weekend we actually have plans in the past also year the and a half. Of my birthday, ruining my birthday. Oh, you don't have to go. Uh, Whiny little baby. <laughs> Lunar whale is the special mount. The minions are Edge, Rosa, and Iridia from a Final Fantasy game. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll also be. There will also be commemorative orchestrian roles. Uh, I remiss asking, how much do you think the whale is going to cost? I oh, think we've, we've wondered This was like that. an eight-seater mount. I had originally said $80, I think but then high. I think people talked me down, so I'm thinking like 60 50 to 60 I agree with that. 
Um, um, so there, so, so the fan fest is going to have in-game events and as well as like the stage events, which will be broadcast live. They're going to have digital activities available for people to enjoy online or in-game, including the Moogle treasure trove, limited time group pose and frames and stickers. Stickers. Digital fan fest themed frames and more stickers will be added to group pose for limited time. So it's kind of like having, um, a, is it? Snapchat? My brain has stopped working all of a sudden. Where basically it's like a temporary filter that you can use for like people doing for weddings and stuff, but it's for Yeah, it's like if you had one game. of those cutouts at a physical place and yeah. you put your head through the thing. I, I think it's Snapchat. I just deleted the app because I didn't use it because I'm old. Um there's going to be uh Uznair challenge, which yeah, is potentially I wasn't on sure social what media. this was because they had like social media next to it. Like is it gonna happen only on social media? I didn't know what they were talking about on this. Is going to be the Fan Festival Group Post Screenshot Challenge. There's Eorzea Cafe at Home, which is going to include video tutorials of select recipes from the Eorzean Cafe. This was actually, that was one of the most interesting things I thought. That's for pretty cool. Because the, the Eorzean Cafe does some pretty cool stuff. And of course, there's going to be an art contest. Uh, a global celebration featuring English interpretations for most stage events. That's what it will be. Um, on day one, they will have a keynote address. Uh, welcome to Naoki's room. How do you like Heidelin? A development panel and piano performance. I don't know what How do you like Heidelin is about. We'll find out. Well, we won't find it. Well, everyone will find out. Day two will be Letter from the Producer Live, which will also include main scenario writer Natsuko Ishikawa, Glamour to Life Showcase, live Q&A. There will, only, there will be a way for everyone to send questions in, which we'll find out later. And flashback with the cast in a band performance. Which, which we, is the primals. We, yeah, was that, we, we know who that band is. Uh, PlayStation 5 open beta will start Tuesday the 13th. There will be a post on the Lodestone on how to join in on the beta. If you've been lucky enough to get a PS5, you'll get these features in the PS5 version. Fast loading time. Ooh. 4K display compatible. Ah. High resolution Assets, Dual Sense haptic feedback. No. Holy shit! Additional trophies what? and 3D audio support. How does 3D audio work? It's like 2D audio, but an extra dimension. Like, how does that work? Like, what is 3D? I don't understand what 3D audio is. You taste it as well. <laughs> Genuinely, it's like somebody's blowing in your ear. <laughs> like, what is 3D audio? Uh, Chili just says it's crazy good. Okay. 3D audio is crazy good. They spent a lot of time showing off how pretty this uh, this looks on the live stream. I'm sure it looks so, amazing. Yeah. Uh, those of you who have been lucky enough to get a PS5, I'm sure you're going to be very impressed and enjoy the upgrade. Um, There will be a patch 5.5 patch note reading. Uh, Yoshida will be reading patch notes for patch 5.5 on Monday, April 12th at about 11 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. No translation. Japanese only. Oh, so 3D audio is surround sound. That's all it is. Everybody's saying it helps with hearing location and you can hear someone's walking next to you. You can hear it from one side, the headphone to the other. So it's surround sound. Got it surround sound but in your headphones i don't know i've had i mean i i have certain there's certain music you listen to that does that where you can actually it does that from the songs and certain I games know. you play so cool it's cool they're doing that with playstation uh mis miscellaneous updates of course there's going to be a new instrument added to the performance feature in 5.55 for all you people who are asking for more of that a reward for obtaining all trial mounts from 5.5 we just talked about the dragon. Uh, new prizes will be available at the Gold Manderville Golden Saucer. So get ready for some more hairstyles that the Viera cannot wear. The Rainmaker hairstyles being added. Fuckers. Collision detection will be updated. Loading times will be sped up on all platforms. This sounds like uh, PS5 things that are going to be like kind of added to the other ones because the game can now handle it. Is including an option to use the high resolution UI. Uh huh. We're getting upgraded stuff for the PC stuff because we got the PS5 stuff coming in, which is pretty cool. Pricey new mount will be available, which we talked about as well. Those golden shiny bits. Players can now purchase certain prizes that were available during the Make It Rain campaign in previous years, such as the Rainmaker hairstyle. So that's not Pete. That's not being added to the Golden Saucer. That's being added to the Cash Shop. 
What is? The Rainmaker hairstyle. No, they said it was being added to... No, and here says players can now purchase certain prizes. Purchase means money. No, mon- purchase at the Golden Saucer. You separated that out. Um, I think that's how they worded it. Well, not here. But I saw a you Twitter lie. post that said the Rainmaker hairstyle is being added to the Gold Saucer. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Yay, translation. Like, I've just recently learned how to read, but I think I got that one right. All right, Pete. So what about this this next segment? Should we do a little death pool? Who's going to die, Avi? No. I've already Who's talked about die? that like a bunch of times. You don't have to. Just give me your final final thing. Who's going to die? Fordola and Gaius. <gasps> Killing my best girl. I yeah. I think she, the fact that she's coming back, like, why else would they bring her back but to kill her? Because she's gonna have a really big part in six point oh. To die. Uh oh! I wish you were right, Doctor of Deliciousness. I wish Alphano would die, but I think we've already seen him in the trailer for Endwalker. So I believe he will be making it. Everyone in that trailer will be making it. Alice will be making it. I want Gaius dead. I want all of Gaius' I'm children dead. I'm not saying dead. I want them to die. No, I'm, I'm saying, saying that's I who I think. I want them to die. All right. All right. With that, let's get to uh, the community roundup, partner. And this week, I want to talk about a Twitch streamer Leonardy, twitch.tv slash Leonardy, L E N N E R D Y. He does a little show called Who Wants to Be a Gillionaire? I believe we have talked about him before. Mm-hmm. But if you go watch this latest episode that I was on, I was on just yesterday, what? you can see how all of the questions that Avi has been asking me for many years has finally paid off. That's right. And you can see how far I got. And in KK who even wants says to that be, was entertaining as hell. Who wants to be a gillionaire? So Pete loves trivia. He doesn't necessarily love lore, but he loves trivia. <laughs> if it would have been a 1998 Padres, I would have nailed it. Like before lockdown and stuff, like Pete, Pete used to go to like trivia every week. I hate trivia. I am not good at trivia. I'm, I get bored. So I would go to drink. <laughs> <laughs> and eat french fries and tater tots and pete would go to do I, trivia so i'd still drink i'm not saying you wouldn't but uh, i can drink and trivia at the same time oh we baby. know oh we know um so yeah so he he had a blast he had a lot of fun he really digs trivia and he actually did really well he did much better than he does on my questions but that's because pete i'm trying like you the whole point with me doing this like teaching pete lore was like let's add some lore to the show so i tried <laughs> to make all the questions lore specific I know. Okay. It like made me feel bad. <laughs> and my questions were so hard and all. I'm like these are easy compared to Avi's questions. They're not even mine questions only. Like our listeners give you those questions too. Who would, we could take some more. Bring them on. I'm big brain. Hmm. Smooth brain. Let's get to some listener reaction. We have Doctor of Delicious who says, What do you get when you have too many Nana Bonds? A Pippin. Pippin. Nanabon was one of the drinks we made, which was uh, when we were doing the drink about Eorzea back in the day. So this is like a total throwback. That's why he said hashtag hashtag throwback. It's a delicious drink. It was um, raspberry. Lambic. Lambic. Yeah, like a shot of raspberry lambic with uh, like a dark stout. And so you get like this chocolate covered cherry kind of dynamic, which is what would happen with. And you had a whole story about uh, Raubana and Nanabon. Bouncing the bear. (laughs) The bear. I remember that. (laughs) And so, yeah, that was, I love it. The Nanabon. Uh, Sonatina uh, said, fun fact, I met Pete and his wife at TwitchCon. Wonderful people. Sonatina went on right after me on uh, Who Wants to Be a Gillionaire. I remember Sonatina. I didn't remember your name until now. I see your picture. I was like, I remember that, dude. You got an epic beard. (laughs) Uh, William Riley, the old school gamer, says, She heals, I tank. Thank you for answering my tweet. I took a break from 14 because my jobs are up in the 70s. I'm at the patch after Stormblood. I've uh, been playing Gunbreaker, but I started getting scared about tanking because we are getting in the endgame stuff. It's intimidating to think about the difficulty of the high-level bosses, and I'm always worried about messing up, and I'm terrible at using my oh-shit moves like super belied. Um, I get that, which is why I don't tank, <laughs> because I get all up in my but head. I will say that's what these dungeons are for. These yeah, dungeons yeah. are for us learning our jobs, so you just need to keep 
on doing it. Keep on practicing. You'll get that muscle memory. Uh, so you make sure to use that super belide right after a healer heals you up to full. Just like I do. And we actually have a couple tweets from Disco Cub. The first of which says, I'm not sure what it says that I'd completely forgotten about the 14 live letter until I happened to open YouTube. Trailer for 5.5 is okay. I'm still not hyped, but hoping they finish strong. At least she heals, I think. We'll be hyped about a certain returning character. Or Dola. I think that's why this tweet is here. And Disco Cub also said, just finished up the She Heals I Tank episode from Friday. Great episode as always, but I have a question. Where do I sign the official petition to get Pete to cosplay his character for FanFest? Not just a wig. I need the full shirtless Subagar fantasy. I was trying to push for that for when we're actually going to have an in-person uh, FanFest. There was like this whole bet going on. I was even shopping for the like the full muscle suits so like he would make him look fake buff. Uh, but I, I remember I lost that bet, so he didn't. So I'm going to need a GoFundMe campaign <laughs> for enough money that I can get a personal trainer so I can go full shirtless and subligar. Oh, no. I would Got to oh, get oh, leg okay. day going. I mean, I would be okay with that. I'm not going to complain <laughs> about Pete having to get buff for. Nope. I'm down. That's what it will take. I, I, I am not complaining about that at, at all. Uh, Micro Break Podcast says, don't forget to check out the latest episode of She Heals a Tank, the only place to get the latest and greatest information on Final Fantasy Online. Oh, did I mention these hosts are amazing Aww. people? Thanks, guys, for another great show. Well, thank you. So anything else you want to add, Pete? That's all I got, baby. So on that note, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, we've enjoyed hanging out with all of you live here on Twitch. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. If you're new, be oh. sure to... I just say chilies on deck. <laughs> Hit the I gotta pee. Hit that follow button so you know the next time we'll be going live. And a great big thank you to everyone listening to the podcast through iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, or on YouTube. Whatever app you choose to listen to, you really are the reason we keep making episodes. And remember, wherever you do listen, it would mean a shit ton to us if you gave our little shit podcast a rating or a review. Or more importantly, tell a friend to check us out. Here with Vegan Pete, I am Avi Ale, and we will talk to you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.